Hello, everyone. We're going to give people another minute or so to sign on before we get started. Thank you for your patience. Hi, everyone. I think we should get started. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today. I'm Malcolm Panthaki, co-founder of the Revolution and Simulation Online Community and VP of Analysis Solutions at Aeroscorp. Today's webinar is on the artificial intelligence uh, and on how it can enhance the digital, the decision-making process that relies on simulation data. I will begin with a quick overview of the Revolution in Simulation online initiative. The RevSim initiative was launched at the NAFIM's CASE conference in 2018. It's a free web portal that gathers together in one online space all the resources that you might need to take your simulation investments to the next level. It focuses on next-gen simulation usage, helping your organization to maximize the impact of simulation on your business goals. Case studies are an important resource available on the RevSim portal. We've gathered together over 100 interesting cases, and that list keeps growing. You can find out what your industry peers are doing to increase the impact of simulation within their organizations. Please join the community and contribute to your own success stories. A number of industry leaders have volunteered their expertise, knowledge, and time to be moderators of a growing list of topics of interest. They curate freely available materials and reference them on the different topic pages. You can access these under the How It Works menu. You can ask questions and start discussions with the moderators Again, please contribute your thoughts and materials to share with the entire community. With the help of the moderators and our community, we have gathered together a large trove of resources, and you can access these under the Resources tab of the, of the website. Very few of these are actually stored on the site. The site provides a short summary of a resource and then points to its original location on the web. Please contribute resources that you think would be valuable to the community, whether they be presentations or recordings of webinars, articles, blog posts, etc. Finally, RevSim has a growing list of sponsors, industry thought leaders that are an integral part of this revolution and simulation. The sponsors provide more than just financial resources to keep the community going and are critical to the ongoing success of the initiative. If you're a solution provider at the cutting edge of simulation, please join us at refsim.org and contribute to the community. This is the fifth in the Learn From Your Peers webinar series hosted by RevSim. The next one is scheduled, currently scheduled for April 22nd, where ESRD, will present on the important topic of simulation governance and its application to predictive maintenance scenarios. Links to today's recording will be sent to you shortly. Now, if you have any questions, please uh, type them into the questions panel and we'll address as many as possible at the end of, the, uh, of this webinar. And with this, I'd like to hand it over to Kais from Hexagon. Thanks, Malcolm. Hi, everybody. Uh, Malcolm, do you see my screen? Yeah, I do. Okay, so um, as Malcolm said, I'm representing Hexagon uh, today. Hexagon, uh, at a glance, is a 3.9 billion um, euros company um, with 20,000 employees across uh, 50 countries. Um, our 
core values are around focus on autonomy, innovation, um, being strategically vital, and um, to have a stability which is uh, hopefully consistently proven. When you talk about autonomy, it's really about leveraging data to its fullest potential, um, and that is really what we are aiming for. And um, artificial intelligence is definitely a key, my, a key cornerstone in our strategy, obviously. We have not less than 3,700 active patents um, um, in uh, some, uh, some uh, cut, 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 cutting edge technologies. And um, it's really on our side all about having scalable sustainability or reaching scalable sustainability, meaning in few words, fewer resources, less waste, less pollution, which uh, will turn out obviously to be um, uh, translated into, into business. But this is really our core uh, focus and, 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 and vision. To achieve that, our uh, model is mainly about using the real and the digital world in a world which is constantly transforming toward being more digital. Um, Hexagon has um, its uh, tagline, which is really fusing real and digital worlds. Uh, and, and really getting autonomous solutions. So it's not only about getting automated processes, but making them smarter and leveraging data to get them more autonomous, which again, um, would allow them to make decisions. And this is also one of the, of the, seg, of the seg point with artificial intelligence. Hexagon is basically three major divisions. I will not elaborate much on the three of them. The one that I'm representing, which, which MSC Software, uh, um, ancient, old, I mean, the, 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 the MSC Software company that you might know under that name is now part of this uh, third one, the second one, which is the middle, the manufacturing intelligence division, uh, which is really focused on the manufacturing landscape. Um, this division specifically, it's about 8,000 employees. Uh, it's about 1.5 billion in sales back in 2019. Uh, it's uh, 500,000, more than 500,000 licenses installed. Um, a big software um, installation, a big software footprint, although it's not only about software, but also about metrology and uh, some measurements and, uh, and CAM. So, our, our smart manufacturing vision is really connecting the dots between production, design engineering, and metrology. So by bringing those three major components together, we want to achieve better quality and productivity. How? In, uh, if we start with the digital world where the design will start, MSC software is basically the arm that is going to plan and assume the design intent is, is going to be correct. Production division is going to plan for for the the machine uh, and and form the perfect parts, uh, and then metro, 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 metrology after those parts are produced, we create a measurement plan to inspect the perfect part, and then and only then we can see if we can validate uh, or, and the, and that and that verify whether we have uh, manufactured it as designed or not, and if not there will be a, a full uh, process that is going to um, circle back and make sure that we are going to learn about the effects of defects, for instance, and, and get to the right design ultimately, right to quality, right performance as well. And that is supported, of course, as you can imagine, by a major data management system, uh, yet uh, in the real world, the, the actual plans. So, we are here talking about smart manufacturing because we are trying, we, our intent is to connect those uh, dots. When I dig that, when I, 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 I um, dig into more details on the, on the simulation world, uh, simulation uh, world is, is growing. I mean, we, we cannot imagine any company today not uh, running uh, designs through simulation uh, versus test. So we intend to do more simulation, less test because it's uh, more cost effective. However, um, uh, simulation has shown now, since we want to do even better than, than what we were doing or what we are doing uh, actually today, it is still now deems uh, too long, believe it or not. Not all the data is always available. 
actually we are creating data but 95 percent is deemed not valuable data so it's kind of lost uh, in, in in a certain to a certain extent it's deemed too expensive obviously you will compare with 10 years ago it's it would be a fantastic improvement but now we have we have new norms in terms of productivity and competitive uh, uh, assets and advantages difficult for engineering the ju judgment you give multiple uh, uh, engineers uh, to run a design and then we, you will get as many engineers as you have uh, designs and we are very limited to, when it comes to predictive adaptive models which are going to which are about to in integrate future complexity so is there a, a smarter approach i mentioned here today the challenges of simulation leading to obviously unexplored new design unexplored new variants of those designs limited in, in innovation we have innovation i'm not saying we don't have at all but uh, we kind of uh, could go much uh, uh, faster higher uh, um, and 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 cheaper so uh, there is a, a limitation when uh, it comes to quality because of the effects of defects which are not always um, taken into consideration in time and uh, there, there is no full connected digital and real world and real worlds on top of that CA has its own ch challenges. Uh, we, we want to do much more simulation, as I said, up front. We would like to democratize uh, simulation. Uh, there is the notion of real time. We want to, when we talk about digital twin, and I will get back to it a bit later in, the, in those slides, we need to have a real time loop. Otherwise, uh, that, uh, that uh, real time, uh, if we don't get that, the value, a big portion of the value we can get from uh, the digitalization or the, the or the digital transformation is about to be lost. There are today obviously some solutions here and there. Um, not all are are the best ones. Some of them are effect, eff, efficient, uh, but not uh, the eff, the most efficient. And there is not one solution that fits all. And therefore, we have identified that AI can absolutely and significantly contribute to the so, so, solution. And let me tell you how. Uh, without getting into the details of a typical machine learning process, we basically have a first phase where the machine is going to learn, learn from data, um, learn from historical data that could be either test or simulation or anything else. And that model is going now to learn, be able to build a new uh, AI model that is going to be able to predict uh, and and at its own turn now predict uh, I mean they deliver as well predicted the data so we kind of enrich the system is going to enrich himself and get a, a tremendous value if we know how to use it if we know how to process it and if we know how to approach it so if we look at the different set of data that uh, one can think of it's about simulation data, um, whether it's uh, CAE or VTD, for instance, here, um, virtu 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 virtual test drives. It's about test data, and it's about the digital twin, so the, the, the real data coming from the manufactured product after uh, the whole digital world has passed. And uh, when it comes to assessing what's good in each of them, actually, uh, you can see that the test data is a real world data so that's fantastic because this is uh, real uh, there, there is no no approximation but it tends to be extremely expensive uh, when you look at the digital twin it's also real world data but it's uh, essentially coming late in the process so by the time you have the the the, the, the manufactured product up and up and running and try to get some some data out of it it might be late and and simulation actually remains the only uh, uh, the, the, the only way to get meaningful data that is realistic and cost effective to generate AI successful in, engin in engineering um, because we are getting lots of data now the question is how can we now take advantage of of this whole situation to get the right data the right amount of data to do the right simulations rather than bombing computers with the multiple simulations with DOE and not learning from the DOE and continue running expensive simulations while, um, as I said before, a lot of the data is somehow not used appropriately. 
AI is becoming then an alternative. So if you look at uh, today's challenges, uh, we can we can have uh, AI offering answers in second when it comes too long. And you will see that every single thing that I mentioned in this slide is going to be presented with the real case scenarios uh, in the second part of this presentation. It's not a powerpointization of, of uh, our offering or what we can offer as a solution, but it's uh, real cases that are used uh, in the industrial uh, uh, scene. But when it comes to one information which is not enough data is available, that's the beauty, as I said before, that's where uh, uh, simulation is going to be able to provide that type of information. And this is how now you can see, now you can start connecting the, not, the dots between how simulation can actually provide the amount of data that is missing, or I should say the right amount of data, the, the, the optimum amount of data that is sufficient to run those, 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 AI, model, those, those, those AI models. I was mentioning uh, just before the digital twin, Today we have uh, multiple uh, loops uh, for optimization uh, um, that can be we will we'll cover later on. We have the digital twin, which has as an aim to connect the dots between the design, manufacturing, and on service. I mean, on, on service manufactured product. But these uh, these loops are somehow disconnected. Only if you have real time, you would be able to get those loops uh, connected and get meaningful information from the on service uh, product up to the i mean back to the design space and be able to run to, to take the right decisions but what we are doing so far as i said is running running tons of, of simulation and going through this uh, paradigm which is model pre-processing solve post process and report what if we can get this real time uh, information this is the same information in a very a uh, fast way, actually in real time, which will make cost-effective simulation. So just the right simulations, not more, not less, but getting more valuable simulation. And those valuable simulation would be about increasing innovation. That is what the challenge is about. So if I get back to this picture, ultimately, all type of data is interesting data. All the data, I was mentioning a lot of data, which 95% was, was deemed invaluable. Actually, that data is going to be our new gold. That data that we thought not, is not valuable is a very precious data to get AI models to learn because from failures we, we can learn and, and that is a very precious data. So we, we go through these AI models, whether it is test data, simulation data, or digital twin, the more mature the digital twin world will be, the more accurate data we'll get as well. And by doing so, this paradigm, which included, as I said before, modeling, pre-processing, and solving, that, that portion of the, of the paradigm is going to shrink to get, to get something which is uh, knowledgeable and reusable AI model-based. And that those three major steps, which are extremely time-consuming, can absolutely shrink and resulting into a massive productivity gain uh, by re reducing those three major steps and actually post processing and reporting, not canceling them, but reducing their time, uh, the CPU time, uh, I, should, I should say, of those processes to its utmost minimum. And when I'm talking about time reduction, you will see with the examples in the second part of this presentation, uh, it, this is not a small uh, uh, reduction. This, these are massive, massive re reduction, and and um, and uh, you will see that. So when when, when Hexagon has decided to partner with, with CADLM, it's basically about making sure with existing uh, technology on the market, unique technology on the market from CADLM, we are blessed to have been able to build a strategic alliance, uh, which is about uh, focusing on real-time predictive parameter studies and optimization. Um, it's about adaptive learning. It is about parametric time histories that we were we were we are we are able to, 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 to do and gain terrifically in terms of precision and completeness and it's also about real-time visualization so it's not about having solutions that we cannot visualize in real time we are about right now to do so and you will see that so 
long story short, you are going to go into the second portion of this presentation, which, are, which, which, is, which is now going to focus on specifically only use cases, real use case scenarios from customers, and you will see who, who those customers are. Meanwhile, if you want to know more, um, I'm not pretending to cover the whole stuff in 10 minutes here, but if you want to know more, there is um, on this link, a white paper that Cambys and I have uh, written, which is uh, under the emergence of artificial intelligence in CAE simulation for manufacturers. I invite you to have a look at that. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat box for, 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 for that. And I hand it over to uh, Cambys. I hope. Uh, so thank you, Thais, for, for uh, a nice uh, introduction. I will just follow up and speed up at the beginning to go to the applications as soon as possible. Uh, not to spend time, which we have lost. Well, essentially what I will do, I will present what we do, what, what applications uh, we today can handle. Uh, my company is a very small company, but specialized in, the, in a niche activity, which is uh, more or less what we have uh, uh, listed here. So it's uh, real-time predictive modeling and optimization, very much image and sound-based uh, uh, learning and fault prediction, which is essentially based on sensor data. Now, this first one is very closely related to, to CAE. Uh, so, why do we do this and where uh, do we actually use this kind of technology? Was essentially, when we want to use a model repeatedly. You know, this could be parametric studies, this could be optimization, this could be reliability studies. And the idea with this uh, is that since we are going to do loops of uh, the same simulation, well, why not learn from a few of them and then uh, well, do not actually solve the differential equation, but solve a, a machine learned model of that. The idea uh, has uh, a att very attractive side because uh, if, 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 if we uh, look at this, this graph on, on, on the bottom right, usually the cost of, uh, Computing goes up linearly as you go on in a, in a design process. Whereas if we do uh, learn from the very beginning, we can do a little bit more computing at the very, very beginning here, the green line, but then suddenly it, it drops to zero. That means uh, the initial cost may be a little bit higher, which is what we call a DOE cost, but uh, uh, the total cost is actually uh, negligible compa uh, compared to, to the rest of it. When can we do it? Well, we can do it always all the time, whether it be uh, material uh, properties we want to investigate, the geometry we want to change, the loading, uh, even topology, uh, the mesh, uh, uh, joints and assemblies. So everything you have in a CAE model can essentially be become a parameter or a variable and we can learn from that. Now, this uh, we do uh, to a large extent using various uh, model reduction techniques or fusion techniques if you are more from the data science side, and of course, jointly uh, 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 coupled with, with machine learning. Now, the idea with model reduction is to uh, reduce the set of uh, information we want to learn, because otherwise, uh, learning from a finite element mesh of 10 million elements is, is quite heavy. So there is a technique called model reduction, and once we have done that reduction, then we use machine learning for the learning. The initial initial point of this learning is a few runs, so uh, uh, typical DOE with some uh, specific uh, property. We recover the responses, and then once we have those two, we can uh, go and predict any point within that domain based on what we have done here. Now, this is uh, essentially going to replace uh, in a typical uh, uh, in a typical uh, process of modeling and learning and making decisions, this is essentially going to replace this output part. So our learned model will uh, replace the output part. In a sense, we will repl replace all this heavy and costly uh, uh, part of the of the uh, uh, of the design process, which is doing the catch, making the changes, doing the model and the mesh and solving. We are going to cross that part out and just use the parameters, use the responses, and do learning with our software, which is called Odyssey. Now, starting with the applications, well, I have a lot of applications, and 
uh, my, my background, my company's background is very much automotive, uh, in particular crash. So, so most of the applications I will show you will be around this, but you will see at the end that we are actually uh, uh, limitless in terms of application. There's no reason why it shouldn't apply to any other topic. Now I have listed here on the right all the applications which we can do today, uh, all the applications, that means domains, and each one of them has a diff, diff, di different physics, different differential equation, and all of these can be learned. These models can be used to learn from. Just to show the, uh, the, the process, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the customer value, the, the value of the end user is, is quite, uh, quite uh, uh, important and impressive. Now, if I consider learning from, from a finite element model as the challenge, well, the challenge is, of course, in reducing the cost of that modeling. The cost, which includes the CPU, so this is directly related to energy. Uh, if I w want to look for optimality of this uh, system, well, of course, I need to do iterations. And if I want to do a, a sim si simple simulation, I need to have an environment to do, to do that. And, of course, all this is time uh, consuming, so the challenge is really, very much uh, uh, is manifold. Now, the solution is uh, what I said, uh, exploitation of the CAE model, which we will uh, run a few times. We will learn from them. This learning is based on mathematics, decomposition techniques, uh, 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 transforms, Fourier transforms, etc., clustering techniques, neural networks, support vector machines. So many, many algorithms, all are open to us, and they're all uh, more or less straightforward. Uh, and we, we already know that. This, none of these actually comes from data science. They all come from, uh, from math and engineering, so they're all known. Uh, the value, added value of this is that we can do uh, optimal design within seconds. That means the very high cost of doing optimization, which meant running uh, hundreds or thousands uh, runs of this in order to, to find what is the best, opt uh, best uh, optimal solution, is removed. We can just go directly to the solution. Here I have an example. I will show it later. We can go directly to the Optima within a few seconds. And this is really uh, the added value. Let's, let's look into uh, more detail of this example just to start the applications. Now, the, uh, the, the animation you see here on the left uh, is uh, a machine learning, Lunar, uh, that's our software, a machine learning or reduced order model uh, solution and the one on the on the right uh, is a is a uh, LS Dyna explicit code uh, simulation of that uh, sled test. Now there is uh, nearly uh, no difference between these, apart from the fact that this one is, has a, is a slight variant of that. Uh, the main difference is down here. That means the one on the left takes two seconds on my laptop, and the one on the right takes one hour on a sixteen pro, uh, sixteen core machine. So you see that if I, if I want to do anything related to reliability, stochastic optimization, well, I have all the interest in running this one and not running this one. And here you can see what the process looks like. I will run initial cost. I will run 15 times this one for a, 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 a more or less arbitrary selection of the parameters I want to investigate. Now, from those 15 runs, then I learn the differential equation, actually. I know how this system works, and then I don't need to uh, go and do every single run. The, 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 the obvious outcome of that is that if these uh, blue lines are the, uh, uh, the responses of the thorax here, these are the chest deflections of the thorax uh, for those 15 runs, I can go and predict this red line is an arbitrary run for different sets of parameters, which I, can, uh, which I can predict in just one or two seconds. Now, if I can do that, then if I have an objective like this blue dotted line here, it's my target, then I can very quickly, within two seconds, go and find out that solution. So only 15 runs was sufficient for finding the optimal solution, whereas in a normal situation, I would have needed 100. I can expand this to, to any degree of model. I can go up. I can do full car crash. Uh, here I have an example with the... Uh, uh, the, the front rails, which, which are the, the variables of the system. Uh, we start with something like 17 runs, more or less uh, uh, arbitrary on those parameters. 
uh, very very close to the DOE or response surface uh, solution, but I, I, I stress that this is not a response surface method. It is a uh, algebraic decomposition method, but it, it, the methodology is similar. So once I do uh, our 17 runs, uh, will I recover my results? And if I want to know, for example, now the out answer for any other point, any of those colored points, which I have not filled in here, here you can see they're empty. I have done that on purpose. Uh, I can uh, immediately, without any uh, additional solution, case one, case two, case three, those are the three points, I can get the response in a, in a click. I can even get the animation, the stress field, the, the strain field, everything I have in the finite element computation, I can get it now in a second. So I go from three hours of computing here to one second, and then of course the process of uh, optimization and everything is, 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 is free of charge. So my total cost of optimizing any, any structural element on this vehicle was that 17, that initial 17 runs, and it can be adaptive. I can change the parameters, I can do it. So this is uh, uh, also possible to, 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 uh, to share between two models. Here I have another example where we are investigating the the multi-physics analysis of the same vehicle, actually, with a battery here, with a battery, which you can see here. Uh, the idea here is to investigate the deformation of the battery when you, you, you drive over an obstacle. Now, here, uh, the idea of uh, uh, coupling a crash model to a, a sort of uh, electric uh, field analysis or temperature uh, analysis is what we are looking for. Uh, I will switch to this one first. Uh, this part, if you can see it here, uh, takes more or less uh, uh, five minutes to analyze. The full vehicle takes uh, over two hours. Now, what we want to have this model running for any variation of the uh, uh, vehicle or the battery, we want it in real time. Actually, what we want to, to learn this model, it will take 0.3 seconds, and then we want to predict any combination of parameters in 0.4 seconds. Uh, the, the solution is here. So we have, uh, I have done it here. The, this is the deformation field which we have extracted by, by running a few runs. You can see that uh, we predict the compression uh, more or less uh, at 2% of the, uh, uh, of the uh, finite element uh, uh, solution. The the uh, the uh, the uh, deformation field is, is very very close. Once we have that, we can use it in a thermal uh, analysis. Temperature distribution can be obtained again uh, using a reduced model uh, of of that uh, of that battery within 0.3 seconds. So now that we have that, then we can see that uh, uh, compared to to the whole process going from the uh, uh, this uh, crash simulation, or uh, crash uh, simulation, driving over an obstacle, and then calculating the deformation of the battery and uh, obtaining the, the temperature field of the battery due to that deformation, where it would take something like, uh, uh, here you can see the time, the cost, uh, normalized per core, uh, we only use one core for, for our uh, Odyssey solution. It's 0.3 or 0.4 uh, seconds. Uh, the initial learning took, uh, of, of, the, of all the process took 96 seconds, but every new variant of this model will just take 0.3 uh, compared to 1,200 seconds. So we are hugely uh, uh, winning in this, in this process. This, this, this is, uh, again, as I said, uh, 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 extendable to, to any yeah. physics. Here I have a CFD problem. I use exactly the same methodology. The idea is to optimize the front uh, uh, bumper geometry of the, of the vehicle subject to, to fluid flow, where we want to actually uh, minimize the pressure here. We are interested in minimizing the pressure, but we also want to control the lift. So the constraint uh, is defined as uh, the lift coefficient and the objective of the optimization is the, is the pressure itself to minimize this, this, this range and, of course, to limit the lift around this blue line. We learn only from five runs 
only here they are listed. Those are the uh, those are the the blue ones. One, two, three, four, and five. We learn only from those. We add a few points to which we call validation. Those four points just to see whether our predictability is okay. And once we have that, then we can use that model for optimization. And this takes a couple of seconds. So we go from a, this one, which takes uh, uh, hours. I, I, I don't have the right uh, exact number, but it takes hours to run. We do it five times, so it's probably a day of computation. But then when we need 54 iterations to obtain the, 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 uh, the optimal solution, that takes only two seconds. So again, uh, very interesting and so on. Uh, I am not sure about the time, but I just, uh, is, uh, my, I, 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 I will continue with the, uh, with the uh, CFD parts. Uh, uh, now, here I have another example. This is a steady state analysis CFD, a fan uh, uh, analysis predicting the flow rate. Just uh, without going into details, uh, it has, our fan one particularity, and that is the fact that the number of wings is actually a parameter. So it's a topology uh, topology case where we we we, we accept that uh, the number of wings varies between three and ten, uh, and and few other parameters. Uh, a reduced model of that fan is created using uh, thirty runs. Those thirty runs I are machine learned, and then. We can go and predict any new run. Here you can see with an error of less than 2% within uh, just a few seconds, whereas the, uh, this few seconds is on a laptop. And the, uh, every single uh, flow analysis uh, took 16 minutes on a 72 core machine. So a uh, huge uh, gain in performance, the transient temperature, transient analysis, same uh, process. Uh, it's a battery. 58 seconds, 72 cores on, uh, for, for every thermal uh, analysis run, whereas uh, we can reduce that only by doing 20 runs. That means collecting data from 20 runs. Uh, we reduce that to a few seconds. And finally, in the aerodynamic sound analysis, which is particular in the sense that the response is not just a uh, uh, smooth, uh, smooth, uh, uh, Response, it's, it's very oscillating and we, are, uh, we, we actually compute the, the, the learning in a frequency response, uh, in a frequency domain and not in a time domain. We can see here that uh, the initial run takes uh, four hours on 72 cores. Another uh, four hours, 72 cores for uh, uh, sound, uh, for aerodynamic to sound. The first one is the, the turbulent flow. The second one is aerodynamic flow to, to sound. Then there is a few post-processing, and all this is replaced by just a few seconds compared to a total of eight hours on 72 cores. Now, this few seconds is always on a laptop. Uh, this one uh, is a pump uh, optimization uh, with a, with a, uh, with a, uh, a co-simulation engine from MSC, where we uh, combine uh, the uh, uh, MARC analysis and non linear analysis on the membrane here to the... Uh, it's the flow analysis uh, of the pump itself, so the fluid flow. The idea here is to optimize two variables. One is related to the uh, uh, membrane stiffness. The other one is related to the fluid uh, uh, inflow speed. Uh, this only eight runs give us enough information to learn. You can see those uh, 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 blue lines there. Each one of them represents a variant of the system. We uh, read those in, we uh, learn from those eight runs, and then you can see if, if I want to optimize this system, I have it right away without additional cost, and uh, you can see that the validation looks very similar. Uh, again, this one is probably very co complicated, and sorry for my slide being too, too, too heavy, but essentially we are here handling a case where uh, we want to see what is the effect of uh, uh, driving over an obstacle on the fuel, fuel reservoir and control the forces and so on. Uh, I summarize this. The, the idea here, you can see that this, uh, this, uh, this movement of the wheel, here, here you can see it with the nonlinear analysis, should be transferred to this movement of the fuel 
reservoir and at the end you can see the oscillation. So we want to see what should be the, the optimal properties of the damper, damping system here and the wheel so that the forces on the uh, uh, reservoir are limited or controlled. Now, these two computations are completely done separately. The only thing is that there's a direct mapping via this learning uh, of what we call a first reduced order model, uh, communicating with a second reduced model. This allows us, without any additional run, just taking each one of those models and their own responses. Here you can see that we can optimize uh, within, uh, within uh, I'm looking here, within 35 runs, and uh, I think it's 21 seconds, the whole system is optimized. So that means uh, we know the, the, the optimal uh, properties of the damping system, and the, which, is, which is the stiffness and the damping, and the shore, uh, shore A properties of the tire, of the uh, uh, rubber here, so that the forces on the fuel uh, tanks are minimized. So a lot of uh, such combinations, become really instantaneous, and this is what, what uh, machine learning offers us today. Uh, another uh, very important uh, offering from uh, machine learning is, uh, is uh, uh, handling images. Now, this uh, example here, uh, so it's here, this example is, uh, uh, a demonstration of how images of a system, here you see I have eight images of a frame, which is more or less the, the bonnet here, uh, a schematic picture of it, are used to uh, identify the response and predict the response for a new design. So we only take this, we take this head impact, child head impact uh, example here on the bonnet. Uh, the red dot represents the child head. Uh, hitting on different uh, different bonnet uh, uh, design. We know the answer of those by testing or by simulation. We know the answer. And once we have that, then for those shapes here, you can see them, which I don't have the answer. I don't know the answer, but I know the shape. Only from images, here you can see how good I can predict the displacement field or the acceleration, that's the head acceleration, uh, to uh, whatever uh, precision I want, just by uh, analyzing the pictures. So a very great potential. This is another example, combining now sensors with uh, images. Here, uh, on a, a sort of wheel impact on a, on a curve, uh, done 22 uh, times with 22 parameters. Now, those parameters are impact velocities, but also the number of spokes. So here you can see I can have uh, topologies uh, which are completely different. Uh, the number you see here actually corresponds to, to, to these pictures. And by combining these two, <clears throat> if I don't use, by the way, the images, I will get this kind of prediction capability. So it's not bad. But if I use the, uh, here I only use the number. By he here I use the number and the image of that, uh, of that uh, uh, design. And here you can see how uh, exact or how close to, to, to near perfect my, my prediction can be. Uh, last uh, example of uh, uh, tires, different uh, patterns of tires being analyzed for the, for the sound spe spectrum, for the uh, uh, sonar, uh, uh, for the noise. Uh, here by associating the images of these eight tires to real, measured or uh, simulated uh, sound spectrum, we can uh, just predict the, the, the sound for a new case, which you can see here, it's predicted from these without any new test or simulation. So we get a very promising domain. Now, we have, uh, uh, we have been uh, uh, present on the market, this technology is present on the market since around the middle of 2019. And I think within one and a half year, in spite of the COVID the year, which has been catastrophic, but uh, it, for, 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 for us, it has uh, still been uh, a, a year of, uh, I would say, uh, uh, progress because we have managed to be well established uh, 
and recognized in the uh, automotive community, but also in the uh, uh, aerospace community as a real solution provider for, uh, for this AI uh, technology, which allows a lot of applications to, to gain in performance and to really start exploiting machine learning without uh, any uh, uh, shyness or without any waiting, saying, oh, this is good, I should think about this, I should bring this into my company later. Where, as you can see, uh, a lot of people have just jumped into it and are actually doing it. I have here an example of a, uh, of a, of a chassis uh, uh, system being optimized, a traditional optimization takes 3,000 atoms, so uh, multi-body runs, 3,000 runs to uh, uh, identify this red response, which is uh, still a little bit uh, exceeding the, the objectives, but it's better than the original blue one. So after 3,000 runs of uh, typical uh, uh, multi-body simulations, we have reached this, whereas with uh, uh, with our uh, machine learning solution, we only use 240 runs. Out of those 3,000, we just exploit 240 arbitrarily selected. We do a reduced model. That reduced model is used for the optimization. And here you can see that all the objectives are satisfied. So going down from uh, 3,000 to 240 is a real cost, uh, cost uh, effective solution. We can do uh, nearly any type of uh, simulation the, 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 the heavier, the better, the, the costlier, the, the better, actually, with uh, nearly identical uh, uh, responses going always from hours to, to seconds. Uh, full vehicle with, uh, with uh, all the uh, complexities and so on. This, uh, uh, this one is from uh, Autolive, which is an uh, airbag uh, uh, and seat uh, equipment provider. Uh, typically, they have... Uh, uh, using our solution, they have uh, reduced the CPU times by 86%, which is uh, really, really important. That means going down from one month to five days for designing that system. A real uh, game changer and uh, uh, adding also later biomechanics, which is a very difficult uh, field, uh, biomechanics modeling to that process because, of course, when you do safety equipment, uh, the, the dummies do not, uh, do not really represent our bodies, so we really need uh, uh, human bodies. But modeling human bodies is extremely uh, costly. This simple modeling takes something like uh, the leg takes 11 hours, the arm takes 9 hours. These are uh, LS Dyna 16 cores, whereas using auditory learning, it takes one minute uh, or two minutes and so on. Uh, these could be extended to any uh, movement of, 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 of the body. So as I said, these systems are uh, excessively uh, heavy. That's why we couldn't use them in, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, simulations, in modeling. Now it's just, uh, it just takes one minute without technology. So we learn again from a few runs going down from 10 hours on 16 cores to one minute on one core. Now, once we have these models, here is another example of uh, also from Otoli, where uh, you can see here the, uh, the one on the left, which uses a complete human model, uh, takes uh, 47 hours, one run here. And this one, which uses that reduced model of that, it just takes, uh, oops, sorry, just takes one hour. Uh, and, and, and the time is really uh, uh, spent in, 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 in the structural part, not in the dummy part. Because we only reduce, more or less, we only learn the dummy model, we keep the rest as finite elements. So uh, here you can see typically uh, a learning uh, process which has, uh, which has uh, extreme uh, advantages based only on six runs. So of course, the cost is to do six times 47 hours. But once I have that, then I can uh, use any uh, simulation on my uh, laptop while I'm uh, taking the train home, I can do that simulation. Uh, now, another example from uh, PSA, which is not called PSA uh, anymore. They're, they've merged with uh, FCA, Fiat Chrysler. I think it's stand, standless, uh, something, uh, uh, standless now. Uh, now, doing a side crash, this is a, 
uh, coal crash actually uh, is a very complex, uh, uh, very complex simulation. Apart from the complexity of the simulation, it's also a very severe uh, loading case. Now, traditionally, this, this takes hours. I wouldn't uh, uh, be able to tell you exactly how many hours. It depends on the processors you use, but uh, at their company, it's more or less 100, 196 pro processors taking hours. Now, we can do that in in matter of un under a minute now. So this is uh, extremely interesting. And here you can uh, see that also for another site crash, which, uh, oops, sorry, was done by uh, CSA. This is a side barrier crash, uh, where uh, here you can see comparison of the responses. So these are dummy responses here. Now here you can see that with traditional also response surfaces, uh, you you need uh, a lot of runs, something like 70, 80 runs before you start uh, actually uh, uh, being uh, any close to pre predictable. Uh, now with this uh, machine learning based technology, as low as uh, 20 runs here, we have had something like 4% uh, 4 difference between between the model and between the finite element and the uh, uh, and the uh, uh, learned model and the machine learning model. Same uh, thing Kambi. for vibrators. Yes? Kambi, this is Malcolm. Uh, we have about three minutes to the top of the hour. Maybe if you ah. could wrap, we would have some time for questions. Yes, I will, I will go to, the, to, the, uh, to just this one. OK. Now, just uh, want to, to, to show you. Well, I have other cases, but, I, but these are published. So if, if you are interested, a lot of publications are made by Toyota, which you can which, which you can find. Uh, sorry, I'm looking for this one. This one is in particular very interesting. Shows a, a huge number of uh, research done with uh, with our software and with this technology, showing that the actually uh, systematically you can go down from 10 hours to 10 seconds with this technology. So uh, uh, for safety, for uh, vehicle crash, uh, uh, and so on. For CFD, these are all published uh, models, and when you see the uh, uh, the PDF version of this presentation, you can actually go and look for that. Now, what is interesting is that it works fully for uh, tests, so we are not talking about uh, simulation, we are talking directly about tests, and of course, it works for any industry. I didn't talk about uh, uh, railway industry or aeronautics, but exactly the same uh, process works, and in particular, what is very, very interesting is that we can do real-time uh, simulators with really flexible mo uh, uh, models. That means you can actually have a finite element model in your uh, simulator. I will stop here because I took probably too much time, so thank you very much, and if you have any questions or if you have time, I will be very happy to, to answer. So I hand back to, to Kais. Sorry, I couldn't see the time because my, my screen is uh, covered with this presentation. Thanks. I mean, I think we will be good for question and answers because there are, there are at least five questions. Um, first, I mean, the first one would be an easy one. Is this uh, recorded? Yes. And uh, you will get for all attendees an email with a link to the recording of this uh, session. So uh, no worries about that. That's answering already for first question. Another question. Uh, asked the chemist, I think it's interesting, is, uh, uh, let me have it here, um, if, if we have anything written down on the work you have done with ROMs, um, there are multiple publications that Cambis has uh, done together with his team. Um, some of them are actually uh, somehow reported in this uh, white paper. Uh, there is reference to some of them, but to a full extent uh, coverage, I would say maybe you can ask, you can send an email to Cambis as you see here, his email address. And I would say, I would suggest that you send him an email and ask specifically what you need. And he would be more than happy to share with you. Okay, Cambis? Yes, yes, no problem. I have publications I can send you. Just send me your email. Yeah, another interesting question uh, that is often asked, Cambis. What is the rule of thumb for runs versus number of parameters to get a reliable run? Sorry, can you repeat that, the first part of it? So what is the rule of thumb for runs 
So, so for, uh, for, for, for runs versus number of parameters to get a reliable run. run, run. Well, the, the, the smallest number you want, you need is n plus one. I have a rule of thumb, but I don't suggest you do this because you will have responses, but bad responses. Now, if you want to have uh, better responses, if you want to have better responses, you should do something between 2n plus 1 and n squared runs, n being the number of parameters. This is the order of magnitude we suggest to our customers. Thanks, Camille. So it's not much. If you, have, if you have 10, you can start from 20, and you can stop by 100 runs if you have 10 parameters, 10 variables. OK. Then um, another interesting one I have never heard before, actually interesting, how to create reduced order model if I want to use open source, source, open source solver, are you reducing in physical degrees of freedom in CAE or using principal components analysis on the data features? Well, I, I do not suggest you use <laughs> open source models. Uh, be, because because I don't use them, so I cannot suggest you use something which I don't use myself. I suggest you use our software, which is much more reliable. But if you want to uh, really to do this and you know what uh, PCA does, well, PCA does some sort of uh, reduction. Uh, it uses a SVD, a singular value decomposition, which is very close to, to proper orthogonal decomposition, uh, which is pod, which we use sometimes. Uh, and you have many, many softwares you can, you can use uh, that with. You can use R, you can use Python, you can use you know, whatever. There, there are software to do that. But those, but those are, uh, you, you need to be able to program or script a little bit. The principle is the same. Now, if you want to go beyond that, uh, then you have, uh, you have all the uh, uh, clustering techniques, you have all the Fourier transform techniques, you have a lot of... Uh, 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 support vector machine techniques. So uh, again, a lot of software open source are available today. It's just that the technique is, of course, uh, uh, in industrial technique is a little bit different. And for that, you need to uh, you need to uh, ask us to, to to help you to do it. I hope you do. But uh, but so this is as far as I can go in answering that question. I think basically the answer is that you, as Kami said, you can have as many tools as you want in the market. The, the, it's not about the what, it's about the how. And the how is actually the secret sauce that Kadeem yeah. is. Yeah. 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 Any, um, any, any, uh, uh, any uh, graduate uh, student today does know the basics of uh, machine learning. And that basics is more or less enough to do something useful. So I do encourage your uh, young engineers to, 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 to go for it. Start doing this, and they will get somewhere. They will reduce, actually, the cost. However, getting industrial, reliable, and, uh, of course, precise results requires a little bit of uh, engineering know-how, which uh, that's why we are there. Okay. One uh, or two last questions, Cambys, and we'll, we'll wrap up there. Does the quality of the learning process depends on a smoothly varying design space? Uh, not really, no. It does not depend on the smoothness of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, space filling. It, uh, of, of, of the space you are, you are, uh, you are filling with, with uh, design points. It does depend on the position. It's, 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 it's a little bit different. Uh, the, the property which is very important in, in all uh, reduction techniques is the space filling techniques. It's like uh, playing football and placing your, your players at the right place. It doesn't matter if they are uh, too much apart as long as they occupy a strategic position. So this is, this is the point. So it's not the smoothness which is essential, it's that they should occupy a point which has a lot of information. We, we talk about information content, we can analyze that, we can uh, predict that, and that is what we use for, for doing our sampling. Our sampling techniques are very much, uh, very advanced in that direction. That means extracting the, uh, the most, uh, most valuable information from the, from the output. Okay, and and this can be adapted. Thanks, Camille. One last question, uh, and we will stop there. How do you know you have enough data for the learning algorithm? 
Well, that a simple, a simple uh, uh, algorithm process we use is uh, we have we have algorithms which just test uh, certain number of runs and give you some sort of uh, indicators, predictors on the goodness of the of the prediction. We always have in this machine learning uh, uh, technology, you always keep a few runs which you uh, use for evaluation of the prediction. Now we can use that technique by taking 10% out of the learning and keeping another 10% for testing, validation, and so on. But another method which we use often is an adaptive method. We start, for example, I mentioned 2n. We start always by 2n plus 1. And if the, uh, if the solution is not good somewhere, we just identify the, those points and add points there. So within 2n, 3n, or 4n, we usually can converge to sufficient number of points. OK. With that, Camis, quite frankly, we have answered all of the questions, unless something popped up okay. just in the last uh, seconds here. But normally, we answered yeah. all of the questions. So that's, that's uh, right. absolutely excellent. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the loss of sound. We, we exercised this before, and it should, should have happened right when I start <laughs> to, to present. Sorry. I, I hope you can hear me properly anyway. Yeah, it's perfect, Camus. Really perfect. I mean, it's fine. Yes, we, 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 went, we went through a dry run just before. It's a, a, amazing. I don't understand why, but anyway, you, uh, you caught up perfectly okay. by, by, by the, the, dial, dialing in, and it's, it's, it's right. So Thank with that, you. I mean, I'll hand it over to uh, Malcolm as uh, for the last word eventually, uh, Malcolm. And uh, from uh, there, we are wrapping up from Hexagon and Cadillan side. Thank you. Thank you, Kais. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending, and uh, hopefully we will see you at the next webinar as well. Uh, in the meanwhile, we will make sure we send the recording link to everyone who registered for this. Bye for now.